Labdiena, labdiena, drogi. Kaip sakasi, mano vardas yra Lawrence. Well, here I am in this beautiful city of Lithuania, the capital of Lietuva. Yes, well, gather that um, after this uh, disappointing attempt uh, to buy the tickets uh, for tonight's uh, concert, and that's the reason why I'm wearing this shirt, especially this uh, black leather jacket, because I was supposed to get myself prepared to go to the concert uh, tonight to watch Uganose. But unfortunately, the, the system of uh, buying the tickets online is very different. This means I have to use, uh, you know, a Paysara account, which I don't have. And so, yeah, it's very different compared to the online uh, ticketing. Uh, I got used to, uh, you know, just pay for it and then, yeah, just like that. But, but it's not the case with Paysara. And so, yeah, which is kind of a bummer. It's a real shame because I would love to go to tonight's concert, which uh, I'm pretty much looking forward to, but not without a ticket, which is not really the case. But never mind, never mind, because what I'm doing today is to visit around the capital city of Vilnius. Well, I'm heading towards the city center along the Pilimo street. So uh, the first thing uh, for me to visit is Gediminas Castle, or let's say Gedimino Pilis, or Bilia Galnis, which literally means uh, castle or let's say hill fort. But in the case of uh, Gediminas, uh, it's definitely a castle. It's one of the foundations of the capital of Lithuania, that is Vilnius. And you know the story already, you know, the dream of uh, Gediminas, who dreamt about the Zion Wolf on top of the hill, then built the city after the Krivis in interpreted uh, the dream of Gediminas and so yeah this is what leads to the city of Vilnius. Getting very close to the city center as you could tell from the beautiful buildings. Ah oh, look Ukrainian flag and Lithuanian flag next to each other so Slava Ukraini and Botola Lietuva. That's right. I think um, I would presume that I'm going to the left, uh, this way. Nope, it's the Yogelo Street. I have to turn right, not left, uh, because it leads to the other way. And so instead, I'm walking along the Yogelo Street because, yeah, I just started to be familiar with those street names. And so, yep, this is where I'm going. Finally, I just reached the city centre. Now, the only thing I need to do is to walk on my way to Gediminas Castle. What a glorious day it is. This is the Paula of Sole. Yes, Sole, the sun goddess. And this is where Sole gets its name in the Lithuanian language because Sole literally means sun. It comes from the sun goddess of Sole. And so, yes, one of the many gods and goddesses in the Lithuanian polytheism. And so, yes, and this is the reason why we're Triskelion. And so, yes, gotta say, I'm proud to be pagan in a way and uh, yeah and this is one of the reasons why I've come to this country Lithuania because it has a very proud pagan past gather that uh, Christianity yes it's very dominant and uh, the other thing about Lithuania I've just forgot to mention is that yes Lithuania had been uh, under rule by the Russians and then by the Soviets but the Lithuanians they kept fighting they fought back and they resist but of course the most successful one, which uh, finally gained Lithuanian independence, was in the early 1990s. And they did it through singing, which is part of the singing revolution, you know, part of the Baltic human chain, which came across Estonia, Latvia, and then up to Lithuania, specifically to Vilnius as well. And so, yeah, this is how Lithuania got its independence. And on the other hand, Lithuania is now yeah, it's been uh, supporting Ukraine because both the Ukrainians and the Lithuanians, they both have been under rule by the Russians. And so, yes, Lithuanians and Ukrainians, they um, fought as brothers. They support each other very much. And so, yes, and this is the reason why I come to Vilnius. There are a lot of Lithuanian and Ukrainian flags ne next to each other. It's all to do with solidarity. Now. Let's go on to Gediminas Tower.
Here it is, Gediminas Tower, Gedimino Pilis, the symbol of uh, the foundation of Vilnius, built by Gediminas himself, the Grand Duke of Lithuania in the early 14th century. That was followed by the dream. Well, it started with the dream of an iron wolf standing on top of the hill, howling like a thousand wolves before him. And so this is how Gediminas Tower was built in the first place. And so, here it is, the city center of Gediminas. As you could see, the Christian cathedral, where you get to see the three Christian martyrs of the Franciscan monks who have been slain by the um, residents of Vilnius. But it used to be a pantheon when Lithuania was pagan until 1387. Ceremoniously, it has been converted into a cathedral by Jogila, who became King of Poland from Grand Duke of Lithuania to King of Poland, recruited Polish bishops uh, to convert the residents of Vilnius uh, to Christianity. And so, yeah, this is how it came to be. But what we focus on right now is Gediminas Tower, the symbol, the symbol of uh, Lithuanian independence and also Lithuanian resistance against um, the German Crusaders. Here it is, Gediminas, the Grand Duke of Lithuania, champion of paganism, blessed by the power of Sola, blessed by the power of Pergunas and the many other gods and goddesses. His dream, interpreted by the Krivis, urged him to build the city. And so, 700 years on, the city of Vilnius was founded by Gadiminas, and this is where we're going up today, to Gadiminas Tower. 700 years on, the castle of Gadiminas still stands today, especially the Tower of Gadiminas, which has been rebuilt in the 1930s by a Polish architecture, architect, uh, excuse me, because you could tell from uh, the brick uh, uh, of, uh, of the tower, whereas the rest of the foundation of the castle were originally stone. There were origins of the stone, which was built in the medieval times specifically in the 14th century. Yep, it's the 700th anniversary of Vilnius, the foundation of Vilnius, founded by Gediminas, the Grand Duke of Lithuania. And uh, the other predecessors would be uh, very proud of him for what he did and for what he achieved in uh, making his country uh, possible. Everything he did for his country. And so uh, this is the reason why so many Lithuanians are really proud especially with the legacy of Gadiminas, and this is where we're going, Gadiminas Tower. Here we go, up we go, on a path, the cobblestone path, where it leads up to the castle. Nice, but of course there are some bumpy parts of these uh, cobblestones. So yeah, finally, finally, this is the moment where we'll be able to climb up uh, the path where I can reach up to the tower of Gadiminas, or let's say Gadiminas Castle. So yeah, so I can see the whole view of Vilnius. Nice, so that I get to see the nearest river, which is just over there. Yeah, this is the moment. This is it, my friends. And so, stay tuned. The river Neris, as we are halfway above uh, the ground of the castle, so that I could see the whole view of Vilnius. What a beautiful sight it is. Finally, there's some wooden stairs so that I can take it easy right now. Wow. You could see that there is what's left of the castle building, you know, stone walls, you know, stone which has been added to the castle. And yeah, here we go. Up we go. And here we are. This is Gadiminas Tower, the Tower of Gadiminas. What a sight to see. I finally made it up the hill, coming as close as I can get to Gadiminas Tower, the legacy of Gadi Gadiminas, the Grand Duke of Lithuania. Wow, 700 years old, the city of Vilnius is. 700 years old. Here we go. This is the whole view of Vilnius. As you can see here, that's the Neris River, which slide over there. And part of the building, I think it must have been some sort of building. 
yeah, part of the entrance, I think. Whereas on the other side, it's where they have uh, the Palace of the Grand Dukes of Lithuania. I'm very curious to find out what's going on inside the tower. Baltic Briesis Dures Zenkle, signs of Baltic prehistory. The ruins of the Higher Castle Loom on Castle Hill in the old city of Vilnius at the confluence of the Neres and the Vilnia rivers. Due to the convenient geographic and strategic location of the hill, the first inhabitants began to settle there already in the early Iron Age. It is thought that a wooden castle stood on the hill in the 13th century. The construction of the new brick castle began at the turn of the 13th and 14th centuries during the rule of Grand Duke of Lithuania, Gadininas, when Vilnius became a permanent capital of Lithuania, and the castle became the ruler's main residence. The last reconstruction of the higher castle took place in the period of rule of Grand Duke of Lithuania, Vitotas. On the top of the hill rose a three-story brick Gothic palace and a brick defensive wall with three towers whose ruins have survived until today. Here you can see the ritual axe, Vilnius Castle, 14th century. And here, Baltic jewelry, Lithuania, 5th to 14th century, brass, silver, amber, and glass. Here you see some uh, yep, Baltic jewelry, you know, the, the brush bracelets. And here you could see uh, pagan ritual symbols. You see uh, the Jalti symbol, and you could also see the very old uh, religious uh, symbol of, uh, of the pagans, which uh, the Romuva uh, religious group uh, used today. And this is where the Romuva religion got its inspiration from, part of the jewelry, which is uh, often worn by the Kredis, one of uh, the Baltic pagan priests in Lithuania. Moving on to the Crusades of to Lithuania, Grisios Zhirge i Lietuva. Here you see the mail armor, you see the kuras and the knight's visor. Here you see the trebuchet, which is often used by the Crusaders when it comes to attacking Lithuania. But of course, the Lithuanians, they've resisted as hard as they could for over a century. Formed in the 13th century, the independent and powerful Grand Duchy of Lithuania was the last pagan state of Europe. For almost 200 years, it was under constant threat from the Teutonic Order, whose members have commonly been known as the Teutonic Knights. After the failure of the Crusades and the fall of the Teutonic States in the Near East, the Teutonic Order moved to Germany, and in 1226, upon the invitation from Duke Conrad of Masovia, it began to wage war against the Prussians. Having conquered Prussia in the first half of the 13th century, the Teutonic Knights started to launch their regular raids into pagan Lithuania. They mostly ravaged Samogitia and the lands of the Nemunas Reva, and gradually they began to advance deeper into the country. In the second half of the 13th and early 14th century, the Teutonic Knights and the Allies already organized military campaigns into the heartlands of the Lithuanian state. Today's South Eastern Lithuania, in the second half of the 14th century, the Teutonic Knights began to threaten the capital of the state, Vilnius. Having approached Vilnius for the first time in 1365, they attacked the Vilnius Castle in 1375, 1377, 1383, 1390, 1394, and 1402. Numerous sieges, wave after wave of Teutonic Knights, tried to destroy Lithuania, but they failed.